the Earth is a small and vulnerable little planet, blue and green, home to nearly 8 billion people. That's quite a lot of people, considering that for most of history we've only had a few hundred million people at any given time. During antiquity, the Middle Ages and early modern times, the world never had more than half a billion people. The Industrial Revolution ended this balance. Suddenly, machines could drastically improve productivity, such as mechanization of farming. Increased harvests allowed for population growth. Soon, people found out about the importance of clean drinking water to prevent disease. Hospitals were built using disinfected instruments. And halfway through the 20th century, vaccines hugely reduced child mortality. So suddenly, everyone had food, hygiene and basically stayed alive, where it used to be normal that at least some of your children died. Now, where will this lead us to? 10 billion? 12 or more? All of us together are starting to have a massive imprint on all parts of this planet. Our use of Earth's resources can be divided into six categories. First of all, we use land for our cities, roads, towns and factories. Next, we produce raw materials and food, such as potatoes, rice, wheat, maize, on endless acres of cropland. But we also have palm oil, sugarcane, cotton and soy plantations. Grazing lands are used for cattle and sheep, providing us with meat, milk, cheese and leather. Large parts of the seas and oceans are used for commercial fisheries. Also, humanity needs forests. We use the timber as building material and for wooden furniture. They also provide us with oxygen, fresh air and medicinal plants, which are still under investigated. Finally, we need a large part of the earth to provide us with energy. This can be coal mines, solar farms or wind energy, but also a certain amount of land left to absorb our emissions back into the soil. Together, this is called your ecological footprint. Now, how big is this footprint? It turns out there are about 1.8 hectares available per citizen of the world. That's about the size of this city square in Amsterdam. However, the people of the world do not share these resources equally. The citizens of Western Europe, North America and oil producing states are having far bigger ecological footprints than a fair share allows them. Whereas the poorer countries of the world consume much smaller amounts of energy, food and other resources. Actually, Overall, we are depleting resources faster than the Earth can replenish them. If everyone on Earth had a lifestyle like the average American or European, we would need one Earth purely dedicated to providing everyone with a heated and well-decorated house, as Americans and Europeans tend to have. One Earth to provide everyone with the required amount of hot baths, flushing toilets and many gallons of pure drinking water. Another earth to fill everyone's fridge with so much milk, cheese, fresh fruit and vegetables. You need a whole fourth earth if everyone wants to eat the amount of meat that Americans do. Five earths are not enough to provide us with rare elements to keep everyone supplied with new phones and gadgets all the time. And do you fly or drive a car regularly? Six earths are not enough to slowly replenish the fossil fuels we are extracting, nor are they enough to absorb that amount of carbon and pollution. But there are not six Earths for us to provide everyone with a wasteful Western lifestyle. There's only one Earth and we are depleting its resources. The Earth produces plenty of resources in a year. However, if everyone consumed as much as a citizen from Qatar or Luxembourg, the Earth's annual harvest is already used up halfway through February. If we all lived like an American or Canadian, the Earth's resources for a whole year would be used up in March. This phenomenon is called the Earth Overshoot Day. It shows how unsustainably many countries are consuming the Earth's resources. 
One major step is to stop using fossil fuels and change to clean energy that keeps on being replenished, like the sun, wind and the tides in the sea. But you can help out just as much. To reduce your impact on our planet, think twice before taking the car and thoughtlessly using airplanes. One long distance flight produces more carbon dioxide in a day than the poorest person on this planet will create in a year or more. And because it's released so high in the atmosphere, CO2 from airplanes has a far stronger effect on global warming than below here on the ground. Lower the central heating or air conditioning and wear a woolly jumper when you're cold. Try to reduce the time you spend in the shower. Drinking water is a precious resource and heating it up takes a lot of energy. And half fill the kettle when making tea or coffee. Eat less meat, especially beef. At the moment we are chopping down the tropical rainforest in order to grow soybeans and maize to feed cows and pigs in Europe. If we switch to a more plant-based diet, imagine how much less agricultural land we would need. Clothes have a terrible footprint. A quarter of the world's pesticides is used to grow cotton plants, often in areas with water shortages. The colorful dyes can be very chemical and synthetic fabrics release plastic particles into the water every time you wash them. Be happy with the clothes you have now. And finally, if you do want all those latest gadgets and appliances, choose the ones that are energy efficient and of good quality. So they will last you a longer time. So even if you just do one thing out of all these recommendations, already you will have a smaller ecological footprint.